Hello, my friends, my warriors. This is the Mary Mack Show. I'm Mary Mack, and I have the great privilege to be here with Kai Clifford. For those of you who might not know her, you are in for an amazing treat. Because as we move into this perilous time in our world, wherever you live, you are aware that things are changing and changing rapidly. And the reason I've asked her here is because you are going to need additional tools in your toolbox to sustain you emotionally and physically and to give you what you need so that you can help yourself in this journey. You might not be able to obtain medicines that you have. You may not be able to go to a doctor to take care of a sprain or some other issue in your body. And we also need emotional help for the fears that come up, which will definitely be coming up, whether it's around loss of a job, loss of a, an individual who you love, who died, who was killed even. And for those of you who know me, you know that we lost Angela to murder at 11. And so over these years, I've looked for tools that would help me that it would help me outside of medication. I don't take medicine well, so I couldn't take antidepressants and all kinds of you know, allopathic medicines, turning instead to tapping and emotional freedom technique and breath work that our guest today, Kai, is going to teach us. There is an array of problems in our world right now. We all know that. And being close to God, yes, I said it, being close to God is one of the most powerful things you can do for yourself. And so as we move forward today with her great help and rounds of tapping to help you to overcome a lot of the trials and tribulations you are going through now and you may go through in the future, I I know, I know for sure that this is going to help you and you should do it as often as you like. So I thank, I thank this wonderful woman for being here today. We have witnessed the attempted assassination attempt on President Trump's life. And as we see this round, this video over and over again, it triggers us and I hate that word, but it does affect us. And those who have PTSD, they are witnessing that all over again. They are reliving that. I've been told many times by many people that this is just so difficult for them. So I asked her to be with us today so we can learn these tools. You can learn these tools and I will do it with her and you can repeat it after she says it. So when this is all over, when you've seen it for the first time, you can go back and watch it again and definitely subscribe and send it to all your friends, all my MAGA friends who need this in their arsenal. So Kai, I thank you so much for being here. Kai is a energy alchemist and don't be afraid of that. Okay, I know where there's many of us here that are Christian. I'm Christian, she's Christian. But you have to understand that we need to shift energy for us to feel better. So yeah. I'm gonna open the floor up to her and she's gonna tell you a lot more about who she is and what she's gone through. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And I think that's a great point you bring up because it can be so easy to know that you know God works wonders and we lean into God, but God also wants us to do our part. God has given us a physical reality, a physical body, and each other to lean onto. So that's why when you pray for something, um, you know, and there's a joke about the man that's on the drowning in the drowning house. Oh my god, I can't house. believe you're gonna say that because <laughs> it's exactly what I was gonna talk about later. So please do go there, do go there. <laughs> Yeah, and so, so you, it's it's raining, the, the floods are coming. A man is on top of the house and he's praying to God, please help me, please save my life. And then someone in a boat comes along and says, you know, get in, I'm here to help. And he's like, no, 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 God will save me. Yeah. And so I trundles off. And then 
you know, then a helicopter comes along and they're like, hey, come on, we're going to get you up before it's too late. And he's like, no, 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 God will save me. It's like, but God just sent the person in the boat and the person in the helicopter. He literally spoke in their hearts and sent them to you. So it's about receiving the help. And then when it comes to the actual energy alchemy, you know, we have to do our own breathing for ourselves. Like part of the energy alchemy is breath work and when you breathe in you're breathing in chi which you could also call it the god force you're breathing in actual life force into your body and when you use your conscious thoughts to go into the places where you have the pain where you have the negative fears and the feelings and you use my method which is a combination of somatic body work which can combine tapping shaking moving to help dislodge the trauma which is really just stuck negative energy which are actually negative thoughts and memories that get stuck in your body and you dislodge it from your body and you combine it with talk therapy and sending the breath to the area where you feel the pain, the shame, the physical pain, the emotional pain, it dissolves. And especially when you combine it with prayer or for those of you who aren't okay with prayer, you can really think of it as intentions, calling upon a higher power, your higher self. Uh, but either way, when you call upon the divine power, when you call upon God to help you, it makes it even more powerful. But saying that I started this for years without doing any prayer and it still helped me. It's just life does get easier once you incorporate prayer. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. It come, the peace that comes over you is, uh, especially when all you do is just sit in a room, sit in a closet, sit somewhere all alone. No, just be quiet, you know, just be quiet and sit and wait for that still small voice to speak to you. And in the first time that starts to happen, you think to yourself, oh, I must be hearing things. I don't know if this is real, right? Yeah. <laughs> but once you get used to God's voice and you know it's him and you feel it in your in your spirit, you know, like this is good and this is not good, you know? Mm -hmm. And and um, and as time goes on, your intuition will continue to build and God will show you things which way to go, which way not to go. Yep. And, and every one of us has to have this power. We have to have this and he brings it to us. Yeah. And he brings it to us, but we also must seek him. Yeah. And, and whether you're seeking God and Jesus, or you're not really there yet. And you're really just seeing it as your higher self. If you believe in law of attraction, for instance, then you believe in God. It's just a different way of saying it. And, and to be honest, law of attraction is missing because it, it just tells everyone just shine bright and nothing can get you. It's like, mm -mm, that's not true. You need to be, protecting <laughs> yourself. we need to be delivering ourselves and calling upon whether you, whether you want like to use like just the power of the divine or the blood of Christ to cover us, then we really need to be doing that as well. Yes, I agree. And and every day I say, Lord, cover me with the blood of Jesus, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Mm. And I felt that um, that's what happened with President Trump. How did he know to just move his head just slightly at, at the exact moment he needed to? I believe that was complete divine appointment. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's how that works is what you get these little knowings. And if you listen to it, it's like one time I actually, um, I probably could have died, um, but I listened to this little knowing. And this was before I knew anything about prayer. Even back, I think I was still an atheist at the time because I grew up in atheism just with no belief and I had to find God myself. But I still was quite intuitive. And it was clearly a divine hit of inspiration. It was like my angels talking through me, but I was going to ride a bicycle to work. I was like probably 18. And at the time I didn't wear my helmet. I put it in my bag every day just because I didn't want to. And so this one day, the first time in six months, I went to ride away and I got this little voice that went, put your helmet on. I went, put my helmet on. And that day I was hit by a car. I was flung up in the air and I came down. It was a big dent on the side of my helmet. And it's just because I listened to that little knowing without second guessing it, that I, my life was saved. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I had a similar experience in 2009. I was on the back of a motorcycle and a car pulled in. I was, yeah, car pulled in front of us, um, a guy on PCP and God knows whatever else. And I also went, mm, crash. Wow. Yeah. And it took me a long time to recover 
a lot of physical therapy and all of that. But the one thing I remember so vividly is when I woke up being wheeled into the emergency room, several hours I was out. And um, they said it happened around 9.30 and it's one o'clock in the morning when I get to the hospital. And all that time I was out, you know, unconscious. And I remember seeing those panels above me. And when I got into the room, the first thing I said to all the, um, it was a teaching hospital. And so all these people are around me, young people. And I had the neck brace on, so I couldn't look down. And I said, could you come up here by me? And, and so they did. And I said, would you be okay if we all prayed together? And I had the wits, the, the presence of mind to immediately ask everybody to pray with me. And I prayed and I was like, holy Moses. Like even now, when I think back on it, I, I was astounded and I, I was so together at that moment, you know, even in all my pain, all my broken bones. And I don't know, it was just, it was intense power in that room. Well, that's what happens when you have a healthy prayer life and you really do keep connecting in with the divine, with God and, and seeking that and filling yourself with the Holy Spirit. It's true. And I love that we both have that. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish for you to have that too. And, and this is one of the tools that will help you. It's called the emotional freedom technique, EFT. Some people mm -hmm. call it tapping, but please continue. Yeah. So EFT, emotional freedom technique, it really does free you from your emotions and everything in your world is controlled by your emotions. So if you feel like it's not safe to go outside, um, then you're going to be controlled by your emotions and your whole life will fall apart, for instance. If you feel like nothing can touch you and you feel like you're blessed with the Holy Spirit or you just have a peace or a confidence within you, then you'll be able to face challenges and situations. So the most important thing out of everything is to get control of your emotions. And the session that we're going to do today is to help you feel safe in the world because there's so much stuff going on. And especially with everything that they pump out in the media, it's designed to keep you in a heightened state. And so we can't control the things that we can't control. We can only control the things that are in our life that are within our control. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. And to, and to get ourselves to the place of peace. Yes. Because um, I hate to say this, and but in these days, it is so true. We don't know when our last breath will be. And we don't know how we are going to die. I mean, there are people all around the world, all of a sudden they woke up and fish were flying out of the sky. <laughs> and I mean, crazy things yeah. we've never seen before. And floods that the seas just rise up and the next thing you know, the entire village or the entire town, even in like Dubai, a wonderful place, but it was completely flooded, you know? And by the time it took long time for it to just dissipate, you know? We've seen earthquakes out in Italy, in Sicily, you know, there are eruptions um, of volcanoes going on right now, you know, mm -hmm. and not to mention all the different wars that have been built up and are continuing to be built up. How will that affect you and your life? Um, all the governments that are not doing the best by their people. Mm -hmm. And in America, many of us know the truth now you know, that this has all been going on in the background for a very long time. We just get to see it now. Yeah, exactly. So, so all that fear and all that um, being out of control, so to speak, or not being in control, we're trying to get to a place for you that you can do this yourself. You can watch these this episode over and over and over again until you understand what this is and you can do it for yourself and you can come up with the right language for yourself. And, and so that's what Kaya is gonna walk us through 
And I want you to just watch it. I don't want you to do anything right now. But when we're all done in this episode, I want you to go back and watch it again and do it with us. Mm. And just relax when you're done and breathe and relax and do it again if you need to. So, yeah. And the method itself is going to help you to relax and breathe. It's really, it's impossible not to get a shift with this because we're doing so much. We're breathing and which resets your nervous system. It clears your mind. I say it slows down time because if you're in a panicked rush, if you're in an emergency situation and you're... (laughs) You're literally panting and you're not able to think. But if you're in that emergency situation and you're able to take 40 seconds to take this breath and fully for the whole breath, right past that point where you want to stop, then time will slow down because you'll be able to think. You'll be able to see clearly. And so this method is going to help reset your nervous system. We reprogram your nervous, uh, your neural pathways. We literally dissolve connections between negative memories um, and negative uh, responses that you have. uh, And we open you up to clarity, to calmness, to, to just being able to see the truth. So when you do follow along, just copy me exactly. You can change any words and know that, Contrary to what everyone wants to do, this is not about stopping your feelings, which I know we don't want to hear, but you see the feelings designed to move through your body on their own. They are perfectly fine and moving through the body, but because we're trying to release them and let them go and we're like, and we're cringing away from them. And our job is this whole entire method is actually about allowing your body to relax and open up so you feel safe enough to let these painful emotions move through like weather, like a river. And if you just follow me exactly, and I micromanage the session, so you'll know exactly what to do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you will feel the emotions start to move. Now, at first, it'll only take, it'll be about maybe three to five to 10 seconds at most. It's going to seem like it's getting worse and you, and you got to try to stop it. But your job is just to keep breathing, relaxing. And it seems like it's getting worse because it's this compressed, compounded, like um, intense broadcasting emotion that creates so much strife in your mind and your life as it expands through your body, it's actually dissolving and it's able to move back because you're feeling it in further places in your body. seems like it's getting worse. Worse, you use your breath and your courage. Just follow me. And within a matter of moments, you'll have a big relief. So just trust that it's safe to do this. This is a very safe method. And especially the way I do it, um, it, because I combine the somatic healing with the psychological um, healing, it's going to be great. Tell, tell people what somatic healing is. Yeah, so somatic is just the mind-body connection. So your mind and your body is on a feedback loop. It's why if you're depressed and you start sitting like this and then you slunch over, eventually you're going to get more and more depressed in your mind. And even while you're depressed, if you sit up like this and you've probably heard do the superhero pose or just sit in a relaxed state as you breathe calmly, then this is um, activating the feedback loop in your mind and you'll start to just naturally feel better in your mind. And also because we actually store, which a lot of people don't know, even in the uh, medical community, they just don't seem to know that we store our actual thoughts our our emotions in our body so this is why if someone this is why i can heal for instance if you have sciatica back pain stomach spasms i can heal all these things and have in many clients because wherever you feel the actual pain we go into the pain we turn it into an object which is probably the beyond the scope of today's healing but we turn it into an object which is very important and there's a lot of reasons why but as you turn it into an object you can actually start to talk with it and the pain I kid you not I've done this with thousands of people it always talks back it actually has a voice the actual pain that you try to cringe and repress and take pills for and and get rid of if you just let it be there and talk with it and you have no how to listen though it will tell you exactly why it's there, exactly what it's wrong, what you need to do and change in your life. And then as we use the, the breathwork somatic method and talk with it, it 
dissolves, especially when you go into it and you turn it into your inner child, which, you know, I guide all my clients to do. So, you know, you have to, it is a bit of a complex method, but it's very easy to do when you're guided through it. You just follow along and it's just so easy because it it, it wants to, it wants to be spoken to, it wants to talk to you. Uh, and so, yeah, because it lives in your body when you, especially when you like tap over it or shake your body and like breathe into the area, you're relaxing the clenching in your body that's, that's been holding holding it in place and compressing it, which makes it worse. And then as it moves through your body, it starts to feel safe. You feel safe. You change the memory um, inherent in the feeling. Even if you don't always change a memory in it, you'll still get a big release um, and that will help. But then eventually you do want to go in and change the memory because this is like inner child work, also called um, uh, like uh, one person does it called holographic manipulation therapy. I think that's Gabe Roberts. Him and I, our methods, I've read his book are almost like, identical um it just happens like i've been doing this for 14 years um but i guess the truth is the truth so whatever works is what you're going to come across so yeah somatic is just the mind body connection and when you um learn how to talk to your body and listen and then follow its instructions then you'll know exactly what you need to do to, to to heal it and sometimes it will be asking you it'll be saying you need to slow down in life and not keep up with everyone's expectations because you're constantly running yourself ragged and so your body has to step in and slow you down and then it's a process over sometimes weeks and months or even years of learning how to listen to these parts of you and not just for in this situation, um, rush to what everyone else wants you to do and learn how to stand up for yourself in a loving way. And once you do that, then your body doesn't have to step in to slow you down and then the pain will stop. And then if you start noticing the pain comes back, it'll often be because in this situation, you start maybe people pleasing again and you don't realize you're doing it because you don't know there's another way, but your body is telling you there is another way. Yes. And so, yeah. So it's a whole thing, but it's it's really a, a, an exciting world to explore once you understand how, how it all really works together. Yes. And, and um, if you're willing to take the time to do this, um, <laughs> you don't need antidepressants, you don't need anti-anxiety drugs, you, you know, you mm. don't need to put yourself in a position where you may be addicted to all these opioids and uh, yeah, it's, it's a mess because yeah. once you start uh, using opioids, legal or illegal, there's no end to it. There's yeah. no end to it. And uh, I don't want that for you. You know, you may be really in a bad way right now. And this is what you need. Yeah. I've had quite a lot of clients who I've worked with over the long term um, who were on antidepressants when they came to me. Um, and one lady, she was on um, Adderall, but she couldn't, she was actually a, um, a high level uh, manager in some company, but she couldn't think properly. She was always anxious and, you know, the Adderall wasn't helping her and yeah, other clients on antidepressants and uh, along with the guidance of their doctor that while they're doing my sessions, they'll go to the doctor and say, I'm feeling a lot better because I've been doing this work. And then they'll gradually decrease the dose until they eventually just come off it. Wonderful. And sometimes some people might go on it just like a little like quarter dose here and there, but then eventually they'll just come off it completely because this really does balance your emotions, which is everything. Yes. I, I totally agree because when your emotions are not balanced, you don't feel in control of yourself. Mm, yeah, exactly. And that uh, we have to stop that. You know, we want to be completely in control of emotions as much as we can. Right. And but here's the paradox is to be in control of your emotions. You have to allow them to flow, which means that you're going to feel out of control. But it's when you understand that your emotions are made to move through your body, your emotions like for anxiety, it, when you try to you, you can control your anxiety, but it's not through the iron fist of like, oh, I can't feel this. You have to let it wash through you as you breathe and as you admit that you're feeling anxiety, like you put your hands on your body and you're like, I'm feeling really anxious. I'm feeling really anxious, but, but I'm open to believing I'm okay. Feeling anxious, but I'm okay. And so you do the reframe. You don't just say, I'm okay. You don't just say, I'm anxious. You combine them too. So that way you admit the truth because authenticity is so important in our bodies. Oh. You admit the truth, but then you reframe into the higher perception, the higher timeline, the, into the safe way of being. I, I completely agree with the part where you said, I mean, all of it, but 
what stands out for me is being genuine, mm -hmm. being who you really are. Because when you are who you really are and you don't um, put forth this facade that everybody thinks is you, yeah, it's, it's a horrible way to live. Yeah. You know? it's, it's, I've lived like that for a long time. You have to, yes. Uh, a lot of people are what I call on, you know? <laughs> Are you on right now? <laughs> you know? yeah. And and you can't be that way. You can't live. You can't possibly live like that long term. And mm -hmm. and I think that's why a lot of um, you know celebrities die so young, you know, because they just can't keep up. Either that, or they're on all kinds of drugs or whatever else to try to keep that that facade up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Not, not yeah. healthy. Not healthy at all. Yeah, and a big part of the spiritual path mm -hmm. is to let go of your need to impress others. So that's where that's a big part of where humility comes in as well is because humbleness isn't saying that you're less than. It's saying that, wait, there, I'm a human. There's so many things that I don't know that I don't know. And then you humble yourself before God, before the divine, and you say, you know, like, teach me. But it's also, to I believe, about not, flaunting and not like trying to impress others and I learned the hard way that you don't want people to be jealous of you because some people are very narcissistic and they hide it and they will actually attack you um yeah. so there's one reason not to try to impress others um but also because it's just not authentic like you know what I mean you're just putting on this mask trying to be good enough and I remember I used to use a light filter it was not like the the big glam ones we used to use this light filter and I used to put so much makeup on my face when I went on video years ago. And it made me so insecure because I was like, well, wait there, I've got all this makeup on my face. I've got a light filter on. I look different here than I do in person, even though it's a light filter, I didn't look the same. And so it meant that I, I couldn't see people in Boston. I <laughs> and I just had to stop it. I just, I stopped it. I, I mean, I don't have anything against makeup and I probably would wear it if I'm going to a fancy thing somewhere, but I don't wear makeup except for lipstick now. I can't even do my makeup. It always looked terrible anyway. So. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm getting to the point where I can't see as well. And so, you know, trying to do the mascara and everything and then trying to see if it's okay has been a real challenge. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's nothing wrong with a bit of light makeup, but I think when you go try to use it to the point where you're contouring your face and, you know, and you know, trying to like actually completely change how you look so that when you take your makeup off, you look like a different person. Yes. I think that's a real slippery slope for becoming incredibly insecure. Uh, look, I totally agree with you. And for me, it's also a matter of um, the time and the energy and the effort and, and just, you know, yeah. And you look at yourself and you're like, oh, that's really nice. But you, that's not who you are. I know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, is there anything okay. else you'd like to? Oh, I know what I want you to say. Yeah. Will you tell us about your PTSD experience? Oh, yes. Well, I grew up um, just with constant bullying. I, the first few years of my life, I grew up in a, in a drug house with teenage parents and it was very scary for me. And I was locked in my room alone a lot and just had a, a lot of, um, technically, I guess it's CPTSD, um, long-term PTSD. And then when I went to live with my grandparents, fortunately I had them to take me in, you know, they had, did their best, you know, I want to give props and blessings to my family, but at the same time they were flawed humans and I was a very sensitive weird child um <laughs> I'm not I wasn't I didn't come to this world to fit in you know so I came to this world oh to change world. I I raised my hand to that <laughs> yeah so it means that it's very easy to get a lot of trauma because our systems are so sensitive and especially because we see it differently and anyway so just throughout and then I was bullied every day for the way I spoke for the way I looked for everything I did I was constantly bullied and mocked every day and it turned me quite cynical and mean um, in my teens and then I learned the hard way um, about the person I'd become and that's when I woke up to the spiritual path around 22 had my first spiritual epiphany and started practicing Buddhism and trying to learn about being a, a truthful good person but in that I still had um, like PTSD where I get super reactive I'd be so sensitive if somebody said they're going to call me and they didn't I would freak out and I would just just literally freak out. I right. would have fights and I'd run off down the street screaming or I'd lock myself in a cupboard screaming. Um, I was just, I was just a, a mess. And even though 
I always had this sense about me. Like I was always my very, uh, my own person, you know, and I wasn't, sometimes I was a, a real mess. Sometimes I was like just in bed, like depressed for who knows how long and all of that sort of stuff. But all throughout it, I always had this sense that life was this forward move, moving uh, journey where things did change. So I had that going for me. And when I was in my 20s, I got chronic fatigue um, oh, wow. really badly. And I went to the doctors after a couple of years. I went to the doctors and um, got all these tests done. And, yes, everything was out of whack, my thyroid, all of that. And they said they didn't know what it was, even though it was clearly chronic fatigue. And this was – and I honestly, I didn't have very much faith in the medical system because of all the things I'd seen. Um, but the doctor went to hand me the prescription at the end of the whole thing, and she was standing up, and I remember so clearly, clear as day, as she handed it to me, I asked her so innocently, I went, how long will I take these for? She looked at me deadpan in the face, completely serious, right in my eyes and went, oh, forever, you'll always have this. And I'm like, no. So I, <laughs> I, I threw that so. no, no, like, no, just no. So I <laughs> in the trash bin. And I don't know, I didn't know anything about healing at all, but I just knew that that was not true. Like we get a cut and it heals. You know, like that's not, it's just not how it works. And so I don't know how, I mean, I know how, but I didn't know how at the time, but within about eight months, I healed myself back to full energy. Um, and then after that, years later, almost 10 years later, the lung issues I had since I was a kid constantly, which turns out lungs is from grief. So if you have a lot of grief and a lot of sadness, it'll show up in your lungs. And it ended up turning to a full blown lung disease of bronchitis and eventually walking pneumonia where I'd have it for increasingly four months, six months, eight months out of the year, coughing five hours, eight hours a day, waking up in excruciating pain due to the coughing. And in the end, it got so bad that I almost died. But fortunately, I'd already gotten into energy work, this energy work that I'm sharing or a, a variation of it about a year before. And it had helped me so much with my PTSD and like social anxiety and just all sorts of things. I've been having big releases and changes in personality. Uh, but yeah, then, and often when you open the door to heal something, then other things that are out of alignment in your life, like the lifestyle I was living was just making it worse and worse and worse. Uh, it all just came to a head. And the night where I finally healed it, it actually mostly healed in one day, uh, which is very unusual. Uh, it was, I, it was the first, the, it was a, so I've been to the, the healing retreat the year before, which was three week, three days of the week uh, for four week weeks in a row. And then a year later, we all came back and it was the first night, the intro night. And the only reason I went was because um, the friend that I'd ended up healing in between, I invited her to join the healing thing. And unfortunately, I wasn't looking after myself. So I wasn't going to go, even though it was like an amazing healing event. I was like too sick. I was like literally pale, couldn't talk, suffocating. It was really, really bad. I should have gone to the hospital, but they did beg me to go to the hospital. I said, okay, if this doesn't work, I'll go. So long story short, we're in the tapping, we're in the healing and the big group thing. And I was just blubbering in a complete mess. So the teacher guiding us, Sonia Sophia, she asked one of my classmates from last year to take me aside because it was just too much for the whole group, which wasn't doing anything wrong. It's just how the system yeah. works. And so we went downstairs and this angel, her name's Jenny Brav, she sat with me and she tapped with me and she led me for four hours. And, and we had to go between the memories I had of being locked in my room alone as a child, of all the, the stuff that I went through there, then scrolling, because this is a method, scrolling to the physical sensation of suffocating and not being able to breathe. And you have to relax towards it and allow it to expand which took about a good hour before I was even able to properly do that. And then over a couple of hours, what felt like ugh, the most physical, nastiest bronchitis pneumonia feeling in my chest started breaking up from what was physical into energy, like static you get on the TVs or that you used to, this white static snow moving up and around. And because when you release this physical stuff, you'll burp, you'll yawn, you'll cry. Sometimes you'll laugh, you know, all these sorts of things. And so I'm like literally going for it. I'm going for gold because I'm like, this is my opportunity. I need to heal this. And I'm just like <laughs> burping and I'm screaming and I'm just getting it all out and I'm crying and I'm revisiting my inner child and healing her held, like not literally held, but held in the sacred space that this woman was there. And she was like, knew exactly what to do because 
because you really get into the zone when you do this work. You so connect with the other person. And that by the end of it, what was this big physical thing where my face was like pallid and I couldn't breathe turned into just this tiny little, tiny little sliver up in my throat and a tiny little cough. Whereas before I was like, couldn't stop coughing. It was like, literally like my teacher at the start of the session, when she begged me to go to the hospital said that she'd seen men walking around with walking pneumonia that was healthier than I was who dropped dead. Um, but we you use this energy healing method and it, it healed it. And that was back in 2011. And I used to get sick every year for months and months and months. And I haven't had any massive lung issue since. Like it truly and deeply healed it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and so a lot of that was healing the grief and the fear. And so in today's session... Um, we're just going to be tapping into the parts of you that have fear of the future and feel like you need to control it and feel so bothered by the images that you've seen and the things that are happening and just help you find a sense of peace within yourself that you can't control the things you can't control. But it's really important to understand that when you control your emotional state, especially when you lean into supernatural guidance, but even I can tell you, if you're not there yet, even controlling your, your, your emotional state by uh, resetting your nervous system will greatly help. Um, but yeah, we will um, probably call in the divine, God, whichever words you like, don't get caught up on it. Whether, you know, you're, you're full Christian and you believe like, and you know, but at the same time, you know, don't judge the people who aren't there yet. Just, you know, not that they're here in your room, but, you know, just let everyone, you just have to let everyone be where they are at. So if you don't like the words I'm using, whichever words you have to use, even if it's like your higher self, um, angels, whatever it is, just use whichever words you can for the higher power to come into you um, so that it can help you heal. Outstanding. Outstanding. Wow. You've really been through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, I think I signed up for a life of healing, of learning how to heal. <laughs> like that's, that's not even half of it yet, but <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. Okay. So oh, I guess I'm going to take my glasses the off. I'm taking my glasses off because what you're going to see is us tapping different parts of our upper body. And uh, all of us have what's called meridian lines. And as we tap, we're touching on meridian lines on our head, here, 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 and our collarbone and the side, our side. And these, I'll give you a perfect example. You know, sometimes maybe you'll scratch, you know, you'll have an itch on the side of your, of your stomach and you'll feel something, in, a sensation in your shoulder. That's your meridian lines. They're mm -hmm. connected through us. And so that, you know, that's what we're going to be tapping on. Yeah. And your meridians are just like your arteries and your veins and your endocrine system. It's just a part of your body. It's just a spiritual part of your body. Um, and so you'll find that parts of your um, body will sometimes have a little sore spot, like usually here on the chest. If you rub and you gently press in around here, you'll find a sore spot on your chest. Everyone has it until you do the tapping and you clear it and it's just blocked energy. Um, and if you find like there's a little spot in your leg for no reason is just sore, then there's probably an acupoint there that has blocked energy. And so for me, I actually sort of tap in a lot of places. Um, I'm very intuitive about it. You can go in any order, but we go in an order just, you know, really to remember it. Uh, and, yeah. And we breathe at the same time. So just follow along, change any words. If it's radically different to your story and don't worry about how negative it gets because we're not creating it because this is conscious healing work where rather than just walking around all day, thinking about the negative, we're spending a little bit of time to go and get those usual negative things that we think and feel so that we can send them love, understanding and change our minds about them, which means for the rest of the day and going forward, you're going to feel a lot better about about it and those negative thoughts won't be there so it's not creating it, it's doing the opposite it's bringing up what's already been created and dissolving it absolutely in the beginning i used to think that was a little wacky but that's exactly what happens you have to bring up the negative so that it can be released through this yep. and, and don't be afraid of it don't yep. be afraid of it and for some people you'd be like, oh this is so woo woo well that's what works <laughs> I know. 
it is what it is. Like, I don't do this because it's crazy and silly and funny. Like, it does look silly. It can feel silly to do. Yeah. Uh, it's often not pretty, you know, with with the crying and the, the shaking sometimes and just whatever else comes out of your body. It's just, it is what it is. Like, you want to heal. You've got to start letting yourself sigh and breathe and burp and yawn and, and move your body in ways that isn't polite to do. But that's why everyone's sick. It's because they're just not moving. They're not letting their bodies emote. When our body is the one that has the wisdom, your body is the one who knows how to heal. But someone goes to rock and then someone goes, oh, what's wrong with you? And you stop rocking. But maybe that's your body resetting itself to come back to a place of calm. Right, right. And no, neither of us are medical doctors and we have to put that out there. But I can tell you from from past, you know, uh, traumas that I've been through, this has helped me the most. Yeah no medication that people were forcing me to take ever did anything for me um, and only made me feel worse. So I've moved into this and homeopathy and it's just amazing. Amazing what's out there if you go to look for it. Yeah. I give you the floor, Kai. Okay. Thank you again for everything. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to call in God, the divine, and you can just agree with this as you listen. I'm going to call in God, the divine to help us in this healing, knowing that this is not my power. I am using, this is God's power, the divine powers, infinite spirit, help us in this healing, clear away the fear and help everyone watching to feel in control of their lives, to trust in the higher power, to release the fear, the limiting beliefs, and to let go of any enemy attacks and protect everyone from enemy attacks to cover them in the blood of Christ, to cover them in pure love so that everybody here feels safe going forward using God's power, not my power. So it is. Amen. Okay. So just copy me. Tap here on either side of your chest underneath the collarbones with full palms to make sure you get the point. And don't turn this off halfway through because we're stirring up negative stuff so you could get triggered. And so just let yourself feel. Okay. Okay. Take a big sigh. So just breathe and I breathe. Copy how I breathe. Relax your shoulders. (sighs) You can open your mouth and take a little fake yawn. (sighs) Yes. Good work. Okay. So let's go. I choose to admit. I choose to admit. I have some fear. I have some fear. So much is going on in the world. So much is going on in the world. It's too much to handle. It's way too much to handle. I do not feel safe. I do not feel safe. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Everything that they're showing in the news. Everything they're showing in the news. On repeat. On repeat. It makes me feel triggered. It makes me feel triggered. Unsafe. Unsafe. And out of control. And out of control. And I try to cope and just move on. And I try to cope and just move on. And sometimes I do a good job. And sometimes I do a good job. But if I'm really honest. If I'm really honest. I have this part of me. I have this part of me. That just feels terrified. That just feels terrified. So think about what's happening in your life, in the world, in the media that you're seeing, anything that's just making you feel like maybe that drop in your gut, that heaviness in your heart, that tightness in your throat, that unsafe feeling. We want to bring that up. So repeat after me. I ask these negative feelings to come up. I ask these negative feelings to come up. Even though I don't want to feel them. Even though I don't want to feel them. They're happening anyway. They're happening anyway. Though I can deny them all day long. Though I can deny them all day long. And often I have. And often I have. But eventually they just boil over. But eventually they just boil over. So fine, I choose to admit. So fine, I choose to admit. I am scared. I am scared. Notice what happens in your body, what comes up as you say the words. All you have to do is notice where you feel, what you feel in your body, where you feel the words. So say it and exaggerate it. I admit I'm scared. I admit I'm scared. Breathe into your body. Pause your thoughts. 
Big wide open mouth, relax your shoulders and fingertips. Oh, big yawn, even if it's fake. Oh. Okay, let's tap the hand on the cry chop point underneath the pinky above the wrist on the fleshy part. Okay, we're going to take a sign. You're going to relax your body, but not the fear, just everything else, like relax your skin and your fingertips. <sighs> I choose to send myself compassion. I choose to send myself compassion. Mm -hmm. So let's feel the fear and give it a number. This fear of what's going on, this fear of the world, this fear of being unsafe. So 10 means it's the most terrified ever. You've got extreme maybe PTSD coming up or whatever it is. And one means it's hardly even there. So you probably don't even need this tap. So say, I choose to admit I have this fear. I choose to admit I have this fear. And think about what your fear is. Is it about what you're seeing in the media? Is it about what could happen to your family? Is it about what could happen in society? Now just think of it, think of it, think of it. And now breathe into wherever you feel the tightness come up in your body without needing it to change. Ready? Big inhale, sit up straight. Pause your thoughts, relax your heart towards the feeling slowly. Big exhale, open the mouth a little bit wider. Don't hurt yourself. Okay, tap the inside of your wrist together. Say it like you mean it. I'm open to loving and accepting myself. I'm open to loving and accepting myself. I only have this fear. I only have this fear. I feel where the fear is. I only have this fear. I only have this fear. Which I feel to a number of a... Which I feel to a number of six. Mm -hmm. So just yeah. notice that number in your body. And it may actually go up uh, because the numbness might wear off. So there's nothing wrong if that happens. And repeat after me. Yep, I definitely feel it. Yes, I definitely feel it. And close your eyes and say the word here like a laser pointer that the cat chases. I feel it in here. I feel it in here. Now stay in here and breathe into that spot with your breath. Don't hope it will change. Just relax the clenching and the clamping and take a nice sigh. Relax your heart towards it. And we want it to expand like we spoke about. Oh, get out of its way. Let it expand in your body. Relax the clenching. And one more sigh. Really breathe underneath the feeling. Don't need it to change. Oh. Okay, hand on your heart. Tap around the top of your head. Say it like you mean it. I choose to send myself compassion. I choose to send myself compassion. And feel where you feel the fear. And notice what color it is. Even if you think you're making it up or it's just some dark thing. And just say to yourself, the color is. The color is purple. Mm -hmm. Notice it'll change or it might be multiple colors. Tap your eyebrows. Yep, I definitely feel it. I definitely feel it. Feel it, feel it, feel it. Just stay here for a moment. Notice what shape it is, if it's a blob or a square or jagged and breathe into it and feel around the color. Pause your thoughts, slow it down. Tapping right here in the eyebrows next to where the nose starts. Just take a big sigh. Even though I don't want to feel this. Even though I don't want to feel this. What if? What if? What if it's a part of me? What if it's a part of me that really cares about my future? That really cares about my future. It's worried for me. It's worried. It's worried for me. Yeah, it's up in the corners of your eyes. And just acknowledge that. Can you see that this part of you actually cares about you? Now, there might be some cases where it really doesn't. They're very few and far between, but that would be a case of deliverance, actually. So, but for most of us, if it's here and you feel like, oh, it's just scared and it really cares about my future, notice it and breathe into it. Big sigh and send it some thank yous, some grace, because it cares. Oh, open the mouth. Oh. <sighs> There you go. <laughs> good. And let that feelings move. If laughter comes up, that's a good sign. Let's tap the, the top of the cheekbones right in front of the face, right at the front at the top. Don't tap around on this point. It's a good one. Okay. So think about the thing you're scared of. I choose to admit I'm scared. I choose to admit I'm scared. Feel it. I feel it in here. I feel it. Growing up. Growing up. I was taught that life isn't safe. I was taught that life wasn't safe. And I've been holding it in here ever since. 
and I've been holding it in here ever since. I just got on with life. I just got on with life. But if I'm really honest. But if I'm really honest. My childhood was harder than I usually admit. My childhood was much harder than I usually admit. Even if it was better than others. Even if it was better than others. Or worse. Or worse. My stuff is valid. My stuff is valid. Now, this is the most important part and one that people often shy away from. So just put your trust in me and just do this. I give myself permission to feel this feeling. I give myself permission to feel this feeling. Because it's a part of me that needs my love the most. Because it's a part of me that needs my love needs love the most it's actually terrified it's actually terrifying so i choose to call light into my body so i choose to call light into my body whichever words you like i choose to call god the divine into my body i choose to call the lord into my life yes my body yes, use the words that work for you hand on your heart tap on the divot above your lips and i choose to send this part of me love and I choose to send this part of me love. Even if I have another part of me that just can't. Even if I have another part of me that just can't. I might never love this part of me. I might never love this part of me. Doesn't want it to be here. Doesn't want to be here. Rub your shoulders. That's okay. It's okay. This part just cares about me. This part just cares about me. So now accept both the parts. So feel the fear you have in your body. And notice if any part of you is like, doesn't want to accept it, don't overthink it, just let it be there. I choose to give both these parts of me permission to be here. I choose to give both of these parts of me permission to be here. So take a breath and fully let them stay because they're there anyway. So take a big sigh. Because they're there anyway. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I admit I really feel this fear. I admit I really feel this fear. Tap on the diva under lips. And even though I think I should be over it. And even though I think I should be over it by this time in my life. It turns out I am human. It turns out I'm human. <laughs> and we all have human fears. And we all have human fears. So I choose to forgive myself for feeling this way. Oh, that's a big one. So I choose to forgive myself for feeling this way. Because I am scared. Because I am scared. I am hurt. I am hurt. I'm worried. I'm very worried. But I'm open to believing that I can feel differently. But I am open to believe that I can feel differently. It's temporary. It's temporary. But even if I always felt this way. But even if I always felt this way. Feel it in your stomach. I would still be worthy of being loved. I would still be worthy of being loved. Even if I don't believe it. Even if I don't believe it. Even if I never believe that I'm truly worthy. Even if I never believe that I'm truly worthy. I am worthy. I am worthy. I was born worthy. I was born worthy. So I choose to send myself compassion and forgiveness. So I choose to send myself compassion and forgiveness. Tap your chest. And even if this fear doesn't change today. And even if this fear doesn't change today. I choose to send myself compassion. I choose to send myself compassion. This guy's really important. We'll say it again. And I forgive myself for being human. And I forgive myself for being human. Shrug your shoulders. This is just how I feel right now. This is just how I feel right now. And of course I do. And of course I do. This is a natural reaction. This is a natural reaction. So now spend a moment to forgive it. Take a big sigh. And forgiveness feels like it is what it is. It's, you know, it is what it is. Just big sigh. Oh, relax your belly button. Relax your fingers, your toes. And take a big yawn. Even if it's really fake, it doesn't matter. Just breathe in around the remaining fear and fully forgive it for being hurt and scared. It is what it is. Relax the clenching. I release this feeling into my body. I release this feeling into my body. I choose to go into this feeling. I choose to go into this feeling. I invite it into my body. I invite it into my body. So I can protect it. So I can protect it. So God, the divine, the Lord can protect it. So that the Lord can protect it. Yes.
And now just breathe in and really imagine that you're hugging it like a little scared child or a kitten or a puppy. Rather than clenching it, you're hugging it. So breathe in. So let's ask God, the divine, the Lord. So let's say, no, let me ask you and then you just answer it at the end. So what light color frequency is needed to help this part of you feel safe? What's the first color that comes to mind? Purple. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So everyone choose your own color. Breathe in that beautiful light frequency through your body like a beautiful spiral, knowing this is coming direct from the divine. Breathe in. Big sigh. Relax your belly button. And ah, just know whether you see it or pretend it, it is a real energy and it's flowing around the fear and it's comforting the fear. A big heavy sigh. Ah. Okay, um, let's tap here on the side of the body if you want. Let's say it like you mean it. I choose to love and forgive myself. I choose to love and forgive myself. Okay, tap the side of hand, the credit chop point. I can only control what's in my life. I can only control what's in my life. I can't control other people. I can't control other people. I can't control what's happening on the news. I can't control what's happening in the news. I have a hard enough time controlling myself. I have a hard enough time controlling myself. So why am I trying to control them? So why am I trying to control them? I understand why. I understand why. I just want life to be better. I just want life to be better. So I forgive myself for this as much as I can. So I forgive myself for this as much as I can. So do that. It is what it is. Energy sort of shrug your shoulders and... Just the way it is. Yeah, there you go. Big sigh. Ruth, forgive yourself for how you feel. And let's say, so I choose to believe in myself. So I choose to believe in myself. And don't think of the answer, just be in the question. If an answer pops in, that's fine. But let's ask, what can I control in my life? Mm-hmm. What can I control in my life? So just ask the question and be in the question. Don't really try to think of the answer. Let's tap the inside of your wrist together. What if it gets to be easy? Mm -hmm. What if it gets to be easy? Yeah, just ask really curiously. What if it gets to be easier than I thought? What if it gets to be easier than I thought? I admit I still have this fear and worry. I admit, I still have this fear and worry. But I'm open to believing. But I'm open to believing. That things can be different. That things can be different. And when I calm myself down. And when I calm myself down. I can think clearly. I can think so much more clearly. And then I'll make better decisions. And I'll make better decisions. So even though so many crazy things are happening, So even though so many crazy things are happening. What if I take my attention off of that? What if I take my attention off of that? And look at how can I help myself? And look at how can I help myself? How can I help the people directly in my life? How can I help the people directly in my life? People who I can actually make a difference for. People who I can actually make a difference for. The ripple effect is big. The ripple effect is big. Way bigger than I've realized. Way bigger than I realized. So even though I want to change the world. So even though I want to change the world. What if to change the world? What if to change the world? I simply change myself and the people directly around me. I simply change myself and the people directly around me. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you can't change them by force. You can just change them by showing up and helping them and doing good things for them. Right? Okay. Hand on your heart, big deep sigh. Notice the fear now. Notice what color it is. It's okay if it's the same or different. And let's wrap up by saying, even though I have this remaining fear. Even though I have this remaining fear. If I'm honest, I've already transformed so much. If I'm honest, I've already transformed so much of it. It it does feel different. Definitely feels different. So I invite it into my body. So I invite it into my body. I give it permission to stay so I can protect it. I give it permission to stay so I can protect it. So God, the divine, the Lord can protect it. 
so that the Lord can protect it. Big deep sign. Imagine it's being protected. <sighs> I'm calling upon God, the divine, to bring a, a wall of fire around our lives to protect every person on this call, all of our family members, to bring deep healing and forgiveness and to bring Jesus into everyone's Hearts. If you prefer to think of it as a spirit of living love, that's okay too. It's a real spirit and it is happening now. So it is. Amen. Amen. Okay, give yourself a little shake. Oh. <laughs> yeah. If I can do it on camera, you can do it. Okay, you clench your hands, your feet, your face. You go, uh, exhale. Uh. Uh. And then inhale. Oh. Shake it out. <laughs> what number it is now. <laughs> oh, that's what oh. number it is now. So when you feel the fear, I feel it to a number of a notice how it's changed. Yes. Okay. Two, that was that for you. Three and the knot in my stomach has like dissipated some. So that's really good. That is really good. I you know, I, I noticed um only in the last few months that I was holding myself, like my, you know, my stomach muscles, I was holding them and it, it and I didn't know what was going on. Cause I didn't think I ever did that. And now I'm like, did I do that my whole life? Or <laughs> did I just start doing that recently? <laughs> mm -hmm. But even so that I knew that had to be released. So. Yes. Yeah. And it's like a buildup too, because often we do do it our whole life, but sometimes it just gets worse to the point where we start to notice it. Or it could be too, that you're in your spiritual path you're doing a lot of healing. And so it's like the next layer comes up to be healed. So you'll have something that's sort of in there and sort of maybe active or maybe dormant, but as you heal some things and you're ready for the next level and then the next thing comes up to be healed. And it's not like this, it doesn't mean that you have to wait to some big day to be ready for other things. It's just, it's just a, a part of the journey as we move through life. We have things to, we have fears to face and to conquer with love. Absolutely. That was yeah. wonderful, Kai. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. So for our viewers watching, I'd love you to put in the comments what your highlights were, how that affected you and any questions you have as well. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear it. That would be great. And don't forget to subscribe and like, but most of all, you have to share this, share this widely because I want you to have these tools um, for yourself as we move forward in life. Yes. So. Uh, and one last thing is this work is intensive. It's not just going for a walk in the park or things like that. It's like really, we're actually moving bits of your body and, and energy system in the spirit realm and your physical actual body that have been stuck in place for decades. Um, so it may continue to, it will continue to work over the next couple of days. You might feel tired. You might feel hungry. You might feel restless. You might feel sleepy. Trust your body and have, and really drink a lot of extra water, especially water in itself doesn't actually hydrate you. You need to have some sort of like pink salt or sea salt, some magnesium, something like that to help it hydrate it's very important that you do look after your body if your body wants to eat listen to your body if your body wants to sleep you may want to put on a song and do a little dance or go out for a walk or write in your journal or talk to a friend that you trust but i suggest don't scroll for like the next 15 minutes and just try to have some time to recombobulate in your system yes and also too the less scrolling we do the better yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, I want to thank you so much. I'm in the links. I'm going to give you her YouTube site, her YouTube channel and uh, her website and all of her information. So you can look at all the amazing, I mean, amazing um, tapping sessions that she has on her YouTube channel. And um, I used a number of them and that's how I came to know her. Um, and she helped me tremendously, even just through this, uh, you know, those videos. But if you feel the need to reach out to her for personal, you know, growth, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I appreciate your time today, Kai. I bless you. I send you blessings and love. And I'm so grateful for everything you've done for us today. I hope at some point, maybe you'll come back again. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. This has been a real pleasure to share this. Thank you. God bless. Bye.